Today I'm going to start laying track and track bed on my model railway in N-gauge. How hard can that be? This is my uh, first attempt to mark out uh, some centre lines uh, so I can start laying some track. Um, this is uh, this is probably the most challenging uh, piece of track from a uh, track laying point of view. Um, almost all the curves here are minimum radius. Um, so I thought I'd just do this first uh, and get it right and learn all the lessons I need to learn. Um, so this is my first attempt. I've printed out the, uh, the track plan uh, in one-to-one -one scale. And I've just attached it to this piece of MDF uh, using a few dabs of wood glue um, and lined it up. It's quite, it's quite helpful. You can see the actual, these are 10 centimeter grid lines. Um, so I can use those to make sure that uh, each of the six bits of A3 here are uh, properly positioned. And I think I've reasonably got it right. And then what I've been doing is just marking along the center line. If I get a bit closer, you can see there, um, I've just put a screw there and banged it with a hammer. Um, so hopefully when I take these bits of paper off, there'll be a whole bunch of dots on the MDF and I can join, join the, literally join the dots and that will mark out my center lines. I've also marked out the edges of the, um, did I do that one? Yeah, I think I did not very well there. Um, so hopefully I've I've marked out uh, the edges of the grid as well. So I can draw the grid on, I can draw the center lines. Um, here where I've got a set of points, I've marked the uh, the edges of the, and the, the ends of the points and so on. So hopefully I'll be able to get everything positioned correctly. Um, and if that works, then I can lay a track bed and try and lay some track. So wish me luck. So I started uh, laying the track bed using uh, using this cork. In fact, it's uh, twice the width. Let me show you the roll. There we go. That's the roll. Um, it's two mil thick, and I am cutting it down the length. It's not ideal, it'd be nice if it was sort of pre-scored, um, but I'm cutting it down the length um, so that I can get it around tighter corners. So this is one half all the way around and then I will lay the other half uh, in a moment uh, once this is dried. I'm using liquid nails. There we go. Uh, I've never used this before. Someone on the interweb said this was a thing to use. Oh, I can't show you. There you go, liquid nails. Um, and it's really good actually. You put it down, it just holds it straight away. Um, I think that was my worry was I was going to see how I would have got some little veneer pins thinking I was going to have to pin it down as I went. But actually, uh, the glue just holds it straight away anyway. I just need to tidy up as I go. That's Ease oozed out. There we go. Um, but I'm really pleased with this actually. I can see this is going to work nicely. Go. So I've laid some track now along the incline. Uh, this is copy decks down. Um, and you'll see here, here's the next section just drying. And what I've been doing is uh, put the pop copy decks on the road bed. Um, and then here you'll see I've got a track setter. So I've been using that to get it reasonably straight. I'm putting a pin in. Um, only occasionally, I don't want to use lots of pins. 
Um, but that's just just holds it in place while the glue sets. It won't really do it any harm. I know some people are a bit uh, a bit um, a bit snotty about using track pins, so it makes it look track look rubbish. And just there, I can see catching the light. Perhaps they're correct. But I'm sure it won't be that bad. Anyway, having uh, having put some glue on, um, put the track down. Um, I'm using these clamps just to hold hold the track in place um, while the glue sets. Now this here at the bottom of this incline, I'm putting a re-railer. Pico don't make a re-railer, so this is a Fleischmann one. Um, I think, I suspect it's just a little bit higher than the Pico track. Is that the case? Yeah, possibly, just a tiny bit. Anyway, I think the actual track should be joining just fine. Let's see if I can get that in focus. Is it not? There we go. I think the track join will be fine. Um, now the reason the reason I've put this here is that trains will be going up this incline, which means they'll be coming in this direction, that direction. Um, so just before they hit this re-railer, they've just gone across the board joint. So the thinking here is if uh, if anything gets ever so slightly derailed going over the joint, the very next thing it does is go over the re-railer. Um, I, I could have put it a bit closer to the joint, um, but I wanted to, to leave enough room to have straight, flexible track um, and have a decent length so that it can be glued and pinned uh, and secured on this side before it goes over the joint. Um, didn't want to get this mixed up with the actual with the actual join between boards, so hopefully that'll be okay. Um, I think uh, the next thing I need to do is to get a bit more a bit more sub road bed on over here before I can lay more track. And before I do that, I might do the other incline over the other side. Anyway, but progress. Obviously, I need to put droppers along here. Um, I need to. Uh, do all the wiring, uh, wire it up. I need to uh, work out whether my blocking is working. I can't really do that until I've fitted another point motor to this point. I've got a dead rail, or I've got an insulated joiners on, obviously on this frog. But that should also work for making this section a separate block, um, which I think I'm going to choose to do, so I have a block going up the incline. And then around here, that will be another block uh, on the inside. And obviously this inner track will be a third, a third block. Um, and obviously going down the incline, that will be a fourth block. And I haven't got the, uh, haven't got the kit for doing uh, block detection yet. But I just need to be mindful of it um, while I put gaps in the rails. And wire everything up. I'll come back to that later. All a bit moot. I haven't even got any uh, decoders in my locos yet. Um, I'm trying to get that sorted out. Um, and then I'll be able to have a go at actually driving digital. At the moment, I've only been driving uh, DC analog. But hopefully, I'll get there soon. So just wanted to uh, show how I'm laying track. Um, I've gone through several different iterations of this, um, but uh, this is the current way of laying track, or the new way. Uh, a few things I need. Um, here I've got some oops, copy decks. Um, this is a sort of latex, uh, latex-based glue. Smells terrible. A drill with a very thin bit on it. 
um, some push pins. It is quite good um, because the uh, the width of this part here is almost exactly nine millimeters. If they fit very snugly between the rails, so that's a good thing. Now I've got some clamps. Very useful. Uh, bits of scrap wood. I've got a few more of those elsewhere. Um, and here I have a piece of track I'm planning to lay. So I've roughly put it on uh, the line where I want it to be. You can see at the end here, I have uh, taken a sleeper off either end of the track and the wall join. I've put fish plates on. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, Lining fish plates up, I think that's right. So just need to check very carefully um, that it's properly on the rail and hasn't slipped underneath. If it has, then they won't be mechanically joined. And you see this uh, this one rail here isn't quite butting up, which is irritating. Um, you could normally fix that by twisting the track a bit, one way or the other. Um, but the problem with that is you also want to twist the track in, along the route you want it to take. Um, it is possible to turn the track at this end and then you move the turn all the way along and that's I think the only way I found of moving a rail um, all the way along the length, but it's a real pain. Um, anyway, I think that's something you just need to experiment with. So there's my there's my track. Um, so the the technique is to put copy decks along the route, and then oh, there's one more thing on these actually I mentioned over here track setter. I'm only using this for straight pieces of track. Um, for curves I'm just following uh, the centre line. Um, but uh, it's certainly useful for straight uh, straight pieces. Um, so uh, the technique is to put the put the copy decks along and then lay the track on top. Use the track setter to get it straight if it's a straight piece. Um, and I then use a drill to drill holes on the centre line, which I can then use to hold the track in place while the glue sets. Okay, so I've put copied X along the track bed. Um, now, when I when I laid this track bed, the cork, you'll see I cut it down the cut it down the middle and laid it in two halves. Um, the reason I did that was so that I could preserve the centre line and follow the centre line. Um, so you lay a piece on one side of the centre line first, glue that down, and then you lay the other side next to it. But the advantage is you can still see the centre line, except when you're going to put copy decks all over it. Um, it makes it a bit harder to see the centre line. But if you look really closely, um, you can still find it. Um, and uh, perhaps you can just see there, um, it's still visible. So what I'm going to do now is use the track setter to straighten up the track. Um, and the good thing about the track setter is it has these, has these holes in it. You can use uh, to put pins in or to, to drill holes and so on. So I'll put the track setter in. And so we can do this one handed. Copy not. And that'll get the piece nice and straight. Um, and then I just need to worry about this end. Make sure that it's directly over the center line. Having done that, I can then drill a hole into the center line. Uh, and use a pin to hold it in place. So. OK, 
Okay, so I've got the pins in now, um, along much of the length of the track. That's looking good. Here at the end, um, just around about here, this is where the uh, this curve ends, and it then goes straight. So I'll just put the track setter in the last, the last sort of bit of track. Um, Ooh, it's popping out. That's a good. And I, I then just pinched the other end uh, to where it's going to try and make sure it's straight in the correct direction. Um, and I'm now just going to uh, put a few clamps on I'm using here a, just a piece of ply uh, just to spread the weight of it. Um, isn't the best thing. Um, but I'm just seeking to uh, hold it down while the glue goes off. Uh, this isn't easy to do one handed. I'm sure, you don't need a video to tell you how to do this. Ah, oh dear. Never mind, it's all part of the process. So we'll get better from the other side. These clamps just aren't quite long enough for what I want to use them for. There we go, maybe that'll help. It's not quite working, is it? Okay, so in my defense, um, I think I was struggling with that clamp because on this section, uh, where there's a join, I've uh, reinforced it by adding another length of uh, MDF underneath. That's all glued together. Um, it's a bit more rigid that than uh, these ones. These ones have a little bit of wobble in them. Maybe that's a problem. I'm not sure. But anyway, I uh, obviously the clamp isn't quite large enough uh, to do that. So I have replaced it with a much larger clamp and a nice big block of wood on the top. So I'll hold that together. So I've put clamps uh, along the rest of the length and I will now leave it, leave it for the glue to uh, go off. So you've seen, I've started to lay some track and some track bed. I've made a few mistakes and learned a few lessons and hopefully I'm getting a better idea of how to do it. I'm afraid I'm not quite at the point where I can show you with train running, but I'm sure that'll come soon. I know you're all looking forward to it. I know I am. I'm also enjoying making uh, these videos. It's a great way to uh, share my hobby with others and, uh, and to meet other people with similar interests. Um, I'm very grateful to you for joining me. I hope you'll join me next time and I'm going to be trying to lay some track on a curve.